uh, you can see uh, young fish those fish are about three months old very young it's a high value Mediterranean fish that is called the sea bass the Mediterranean sea bass uh, it's also known as the Italian Bronzini they are very young there are about four thousand of them four to five thousand of them here uh, you see how pristine is the water we are this is seawater artificial seawater instant seawater that we make and it cycles again and again and again we reuse the water all the time let me show you how uh, we feed the fish like get ready here because those fish are going to be come crazy in a minute uh, in a minute they will realize they have the food here you see how healthy the fish are those fish are as clean and as green as it can get if you see the brownish uh, color here are films of marine microorganism beneficial microbe that lives in symbiosis with the fish so they clean all the waste produced by the fish the microbes are like if you, I, I refer to them as living in symbiosis with the fish they keep cleaning the water and they grow on the waste produced by the fish and the water recycled this collects the solid waste there is uh, dissolved waste right that is cleaned by the bacteria like ammonia in the water and so on and there is solid waste like sludge I'll tell you in a minute what we do with the sludge here we collect it this is the these are the brood stock these are the spawning stocks I do work from on the reproductive physiology of the fish getting them to spawn in captivity getting them to reproduce so these are the spawning stocks that are the parents of the fish that you'll see in a minute that we are going also to have for dinner tonight and here we completely simulate the environmental conditions that they will experience in the wild to get them to spawn in captivity so this is the Chesapeake Bay Strybus that we again you know study their biology and reproductive physiology and close the life cycle in captivity so whenever you know we produce uh, we find we finish a cycle of growing the fish to the market size we produce about two tons of fish about which is about four thousand pounds which is about four five thousand fish and we sell them to the local restaurants and they love it and this is the world's most sustainably produced fish it's the system is completely and fully contained there is zero interaction with the environment there is no waste it's zero waste goes back to the environment which is the big problem with aquaculture today the problem with floating net pens in the marine or coastal environment is that there is organic waste going to the coastal environment as a source of pollution that causes all kinds of problems harmful algae and so on and so forth but also fish grown in floating net pens can escape from the net pens and interbreed with the wild stocks this all is not happening here here we are 100 biosecure and contained there is zero waste going back to the environment and the fish cannot escape from this to the environment and also the other sustainability big sustainability platform that we develop is new feeds you ask me those are carnivorous fish usually the commercial feed for this fish includes a certain amount of fish meal and fish oil so those are fish that are basically forage fish that are harvested captured in the wild reduced to fish meal and fish oil that is in integrated as ingredients in the feed to feed the fish so we harvest fish to feed fish but some of our scientists are developing vegetarian feed which is this you see the difference you can smell the difference so this is made this has no fish meal no fish meal in other words we replace the fish ingredients with either plant or algae ingredients and we really prefer the algae so we talked about the ability of those type of platforms to allow for the diversification of the fishes that we're working with this is a new fish to aquaculture it's the greater amberjack or yellowtail comes from the gulf of mexico and we'll we'll develop technologies to get them to reproduce in captivity the same way that we did for rockfish or stripe bass the same way we did for sea bream and sea bass 
and many other fish, species as well as what we did for the blue crab. The problem is that you put them in captivity, uh, it's not, they do not experience the condition of a spawning ground. And that's where it all starts. I mean, they need to feel or experience spawning ground to be ready to spawn so the offspring can have the best chances to uh, survive. So we are manipulating the environmental conditions to simulate spawning ground, but it's not always working because spawning ground is very complicated, also for rockfish. And they have to migrate to the spawning ground and so on. So this is when we study the hormonal, the hormonal uh, axis, all the hormones, the brain reproductive hormones that control reproduction. And then we have a technology that we develop to induce fish to spawn in captivity based on administering a missing hormone to the broodstock so it doesn't make it to the babies or anything and we get them to spawn in captivity. So yeah, this is like uh, what we refer to as our algae kitchen. <laughs> and you see the microalgae here, you see those densities, these colors. You need to know how to grow algae to such densities. This uh, like uh, lighter color green, uh, this bag will be looking like that tomorrow. So we use them to feed the early life stages of our, you know, of the larvae of the fish to replace fish meal. Uh, last but not least, algae now have a huge promise as, uh, as, as a very efficient source of biodiesel. And what's uh, bubbling here is CO2. Algae need CO2 to grow. So the idea is that you can grow algae around power plants, use the flue gases, the emissions of the power plant. They, they remove the CO, they use the CO2 from the uh, flue gases. So there is CO2 sequestration, reduction of green gas, uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions and so on. And then you grow algae, both as a source for biodiesel and, and feeds. So we make our own artificial seawater and then every tanks get the desired salinity and then it cycles. So there is the idea here that zero pollution, nothing comes in from the environment. No heavy metals, no pollutants, no microbes, no disease, no pathogens, and nothing goes back to the environment. And this is why I said it's really the most environmentally sustainable system that there is there to grow marine fish that are being fished out. It can go anywhere. Those are like as you said, like, it's like the Mediterranean, but we can put it in the Midwest. It's in the, we plan to scale it up in a warehouse in Baltimore City. So start a big warehouse that will produce this fish in Baltimore City and for, for a business. But it, you know, obviously the idea is to produce fish sustainably and to stop overfishing fish in the wild because we are running out of fish in the ocean.